Okay, folks, good morning. So uh, today in the U.S., or at least in most parts of the U.S., it is uh, turn back the clocks one day, which I believe puts us down to how it should have been all along the time if they hadn't have screwed with it. So um, I believe that's correct. So, uh, I set my alarm and automatically woke up at 5 a.m., but it's actually the old 6 a.m. So, had I known that, had I had a standard alarm, I would have started painting at, at 4 instead of 5, but, oh well, so it goes. At least it's not the other weekend in, uh, in the spring where you lose an hour, which is just leave the damn thing alone. Just pick one of the two times and roll with it. But we're going to go ahead and start on our other uh, Hungarian horseman here. And uh, we've already got three guys done. This is the fourth one, leaving us with uh, two more of the Hussar figures. So that's uh, what we're going to go with. I think we talked about doing a... Uh, uh, a dirt colored horse, uh, just a standard uh, brown horse. So that's what we're going to roll with. <clears throat> and let's see, let's find us a spot over here, not too far away from the black. Let's go over here. Huh. I've actually never had this happen. One of these little papers ripped here in the corner as I was trying to move it. I guess the suction just got too much with it. All right, let's get some let's get some brown on here, and hopefully this will be the long painting session of the weekend because um, wasn't able to do much then about an hour or so yesterday. Been busy, so all right, let's go get us a brush that we that is not super. I think this one should work for so fine. Not a super fine one. We don't want to waste the... Each brush seems to have about a, light, a lifespan. So we don't want to use... Uh, we don't want to waste one on uh, the bristles of one on a, a detailed one that we don't really need to save those for the important stuff. I don't know what the hell I'm trying to say. I've, uh, I don't have enough coffee in me yet, so... Let's get a little darker there. There we go. Let's paint the whole guy in this in this color, the whole horse. This is the mindless part of all this, where you're just painting something a solid color. Or even when you're priming, those are the parts of the, uh, of the painting process that I don't really care for that much. I figure anybody can do it and they don't need me. <laughs> I wish you could just send your figure somewhere to be primed or whatever, but. Then if you did that, they'd probably do a crappy job of it or apply the primer too thick and cover the details, so. Oh, how the hell did that happen? Huh. Uh, no biggie. Um, all right. I don't know if that's ever happened before. That's it, drink. Iced coffee, that is. Black iced coffee. Let's, um, let's do something. There we go. All right. 
Painting a horse in dark brown color. Take two. Action. Here we go. No picky. It's just like, what? I don't like making mistakes when I paint. No, because I can't fix them. It just takes time. I don't want to invest time in a in a uh, in a lost cause. So. Okay. Well, this guy's got more straps than any of the other horses. Huh, that's cool. Animated pose for this guy. Gonna have the same theme, the figure. He's gonna have a white hood. Like the other guys in the unit. But as far as anything else, we haven't committed to, to any of it yet. And I wish I could paint these guys um, and base them as I went, but I, I usually paint all of the figures and then figure out who's going to go on what stand. It's better that way because otherwise it just involves too much planning and I don't like, I don't like to do too much planning. You end up backing yourself into a corner. Okay, we're just about done with that. Make sure I don't leave something off. Because then I have to come back and fix it, you know. Which is what happens to me when I'm painting multiple figures at one time. I really do not like doing that. I invariably forget to paint uh, uh, something, something on one of the figures and have to go back and remix the paint, which is just annoying. That's all. I much prefer to do one figure at a time, even if they're all going to be painted the same. All right. And set. All right. Now let's bring this up a little bit. And paint some of the muscles. I don't really keep up with the news or anything, but I um, I heard there's some big lockdown happening in Europe. So that ought to be fun. fun so I'm sure that's gonna affect shipment of uh, of toys again seeing how most of them come from there I don't know maybe there's a lot of people in Europe that order things from the US seems like everything I want is from Europe so except for old glory 15 old glory 15 is here but I have so much of their stuff that I don't need to order anything from them I was thinking of ordering some more stuff from Roundway. Not because I need it, but I heard some bad stuff about that guy. I don't think he's doing anything sinister. I just think the guy has health issues. 
and I've had I've had good good results. Okay, good's probably the wrong word. I've had decent results trying to get stuff from him, but you really got to stay on him. But he's got some health issues that keep him from from. I don't know that he's casting the figures. It's almost like he has a ton of inventory and just. I don't know. I don't know exactly what the issue is. And um, I hate to be morbid, but I was wanting to get some more before something happens uh, to him where he's not putting any more figures out. But um, that's a shame, man. If somebody like that lived in my town, well, that would be very unlikely. But if, if, if that guy lived in Florida, if Roundway Miniatures was in Florida, I would um, I would volunteer to go down there and take pictures of all his figures and post them on his website because I think he just you know the fact that they're not on the website is just um, it's kind of a shame because um, nobody's gonna come paint buy your figures if they don't know who you you know what your figures look like um, I don't know. It's just, just, I hate to see any figures kind of go away, so. That's just me. Everybody. I know that lots of folks were really disappointed when Corvus Belly went out of business. I I think most of their stuff's been picked up by now by other producers, but lots of people were really disappointed by them. They didn't have a huge line of figures anyways, but I don't know any of the details, but I was just, that's the one, the first one that thinks that I think of is they just kind of, they weren't available anymore. So I hate to see figures kind of disappear I said I have some of their hundred years war figures and I'm sure I'll have I'll put them in my hundred years war armies but I don't know when that'll be kind of enjoy doing the more unusual armies than the ones that you see all the time on pictures on the internet, so. That's the problem with doing the Hundred Years War stuff. Is it's not a big pull for me to do that. And like that, there would be a lot of other armies as well, so. And some people waking up here. That's good. Just the lurkers are up. Well, good morning, lurkers. Or good afternoon. I guess see the time frame between us and Europe. I don't think Europe does uh, savings time, so it's probably more of a difference now than it was last week. Now, it'd be nice if we were all up at the same time, right? It'd be nice if it was um, eight o'clock somewhere, all at the same time. Maybe not, it wouldn't be called eight o'clock, but you know, like our eight o'clock might be dark and somebody else's might be in the middle of the afternoon. That'd be kind of cool. Be pretty cool that everybody would be going to work everywhere at the same time. It might just be dark or sunny. And then we could all get up at Sunday morning and paint at the same time. Who gets the first word in? Mr. Smith, UK put the clocks back an hour last week. Okay. So we're, we were off even more uh, a few days ago, and now we're back. We're in uh, Greenwich minus five. So, Greenwich minus five. It's definitely the five. I'm just trying to think if it's plus or minus. No, it's neg five.
Jeffrey Smith. You're in, I know you're in the UK, and I believe you're Scottish, correct? Not that there's anything wrong with that. I was just thinking, because I remember Smith and then Scottish, and I'm like, but you have an English name. Um, yeah, I got to do that. I got to do my free feudal Scots on my, I got them on my short list. I, I, I think what I'm going to do is, um, I've been, I know I've talked about this before, about doing the busy army and then not so busy army. In other words, the the flamboyant army and then not so flamboyant army, meaning color scheme, not uh, walk of life. <laughs> and um, this would be a flamboyant army. And uh, when I'm done with these guys, I will do a not so flamboyant army. And um, that would be the pre-feudal Scots. They're, you know, not flamboyant. Like my Irish are not flamboyant. They're just, they're very drab, drabish. That doesn't mean they're not interesting because to be honest with you, some of the more, my drab armies are my favorite ones. Um, but I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to, just to kind of mix it up, do one. I got the pre-feudal Scots. They're close. Of course, with the pre-feudal Scots, what I'm going to have to do is <clears throat> my favorite thing about playing my Irish. Sorry, I got a little bit something in my throat. I spent all day yesterday working on a yard and there was a lot of, we have a lot of pollen here. And that's what I've noticed is it affects my, um, my throat for a little bit the next day. Kind of a scratchy throat type thing. Might be an allergy thing. Um, but one of the things I enjoyed the most about the Irish is drinking along with them. And uh, it's part, part of the experience. So I think with the Scots, I'll have to do the same thing. We'll, um, I'm not a Scotch fan, but um, that doesn't mean I can't do it. <laughs> I'll probably pick up some Scotch and we'll sip on that while we play those guys. So that's been definitely part of the uh, experience. <laughs> I've, I've enjoyed doing that, so. We're back to Greenwich Mean Time from British Summertime. Okay, yeah, so the same thing that Yep. Let's lighten this up a little bit more. This seems like this process takes a long time doing the different shades and stuff with the on the horse muscles, but that's actually one of the more enjoyable things for me to do because you you kind of like just look at the horse, but you don't really get in there and look at the casting and where the shading and stuff is until you get in there. And it's a lot of fun. It's like you're almost, well, it's like painting the face. It's equivalent of painting the face on the figure. So you get to kind of discover who they are. Um, I know some of you guys, when you work on your hobby, you're probably work watching TV and stuff, um, like movies and stuff like that. I mean, I really wish I could do that because it just, I find it very hard time to uh, find some time there where I can actually like sit down and watch a movie. I get the time for it. If I turn something on, I've got a TV in this room, but if I turn something on while I'm, uh, while I'm painting, next thing you know, I'm, you know, uh, I'm paying attention to that and not painting and the paint's drying on my brush and it creates all kinds of issues for me. So, uh, I, I tend to not be able to watch a movie unless I'm watching a movie. So I also like to watch things that are complicated. So it's not like I've got something very basic on there. I don't do any sports. I don't want to watch any sports stuff. So, uh, I guess you could probably put on a game and just kind of have that in the background, but I don't do that stuff. I watch about as much sports as I listen to the opera. Not at all. So.
this works really well what I'm doing right now to keep me on track and focused to, you know, even though I'm interacting with uh, some folks, uh, and see another army um, kick butt on the battlefield or, you know, in the case of some of my armies, uh, get their ass kicked handed to them. <laughs> That would be my um, my poor courage, guys. I think I've played five games with them. I'm one and four with them. It's just a combination of high aggression and war band is not good. But I do love how they look. So that is the most important thing, really, when you get down to it. I mean, yes, it's it's good to win games, but to have fun and enjoy how you how they turned out is more important. It's just fun to talk about, you know. These guys are, you know. These guys haven't won a game, but their score is such and such. One of the groups, uh, one of the DBA groups in the Pacific Northwest they don't keep track of their individual losses. They keep track of the individual armies. So, like for instance, they, anytime the New Kingdom Egyptian play, they keep track of um, whether they won or lost. And that sounds pretty cool, except I don't want to build an army and then somebody who doesn't know how to play runs, their, runs them into the ground and they have a horrible record. So, <laughs> um, somebody uses my army and they run them into the ground. I don't know about it because they're not one of my records for me playing them. So, As I mentioned earlier, I hear you guys in Europe are going to get, get ready to go on some lockdown I saw, but that's just on the news uh, through the internet. I may not even be correct. There's so much <clears throat> bullshit that gets spun on the news. That's why I don't, uh, I don't pay attention to the news. Just like, okay, you guys have, uh, you guys have, uh, been spinning uh, untruths for so long that, you know, I don't worry about, I don't worry about any of it. Everybody has an agenda. How about just say the news like you used to and let the rest of us uh, figure it out. I need to change how I'm sitting. I'm sitting like on a half Indian style. I'm killing my own leg. Half assed Indian style. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a that's a proper proper. PC term. You can't use that anymore. You can on my channel. English part of UK going into four week lockdown from next Thursday. Better get your roundway order in. No, that poor guy, I mean, he's got health issues. I mean, I wish him the best. His, um, I've interacted with him quite a bit. Uh, not recently, but on email, like last year. And um, he's got, I want to say he's got arthritis issues or something like that. Um, and, um, you know, the problem with a lot of these guys, I haven't had a lot of problem with people 
that have supplied in the miniatures industry. And, and I mentioned this before, um, prior to uh, the pandemic, um, I would always get better service. Uh, I'm in the, I'm in Florida in case, in case you guys don't know, or, you know, uh, or those people that are just turning in and don't know who the hell I am. Um, but I am in Florida and I historically always get better service from UK suppliers than I do people here in the U S and usually get them from the UK quicker. Uh, so if I ordered something on a Monday, the following Monday, almost without fail, it arrives here. It's almost exactly a week every time. It's never less than that. Um, it's almost exactly a week. Um, and I've had good service from the UK suppliers. But, um, you know, lately, lately I've gotten some stuff um, from the UK that um, it sits in about, I can never remember the name of the airport in London. I want to I always want to call it Langley, which is stupid because that's in Virginia. It's Hereford. It sits in Hereford is not a very memorable name for me. It's because I've never flown into there, but it sits on the ground, at, you know, and I get tracking. It sits on the ground at Hereford for a week. It'll get picked up by the mail. It'll get um, sent to Hereford and it sits there for sorting whatever for about a week. Um, and then it goes on the plane and, and gets here. So it's running about three weeks or so instead of a week. But, you know, that's not really the supplier's fault. I mean, that's just, it is what it is. So, but, um, yeah, Mr. Roundway, John Roberts, he's got some health issues, and I think that's keeping him from doing it. But... So I sidetracked myself. What I was saying is um, the problem isn't the service, is the communication. A lot, two suppliers in particular, I've had the issue with. Just let me know when you ship something out or that you just send me an email that you got my order and you're working on it. And that's it. And then we won't worry about it. Um, but, you know, you place an order and you don't get an update on it for like two weeks. You're wondering like. What are you guys doing it? Did you get my order? Did you, you know, did you take my money and run? Did, are, you, are you working on it? Did you go out of business? You know, are you in the hospital? You know, just let people know. Just send them a quick email of what's going on. That's just common courtesy. Um, that's what I do in my industry. But, you know, that saves a lot of frustration, you know. So, because some of us, when we order something... We're already immediately looking for it in the mailbox. Like, okay, where is it? Where is it at? Where is it? You know, now, if we don't order something, then it's okay. But as soon as something gets ordered, you're like, where is it? Where did it go? You know, that's um, just let us know. Just let us know what status it's in. <coughs> what did I miss? I didn't miss anything. English part of UK. Yes, lockdown starts in England on Thursday. Schools will be open though. Ha. Can't get away from learning. Yeah, I don't really pay attention to the news. I, here's how I piss everybody else off listening. I forget this COVID thing's going on most of the time. What? How can you do that? Well, I don't have any... Nothing's really changed at work. I've never missed a day at work. Unfortunately, I wish I could work from home. Um, I don't get people to sign their paperwork anymore, so you don't have to... You know, there's stupid stuff that goes on. And I'll give you an example. I go to a restaurant yesterday, and you got to wear a mask to go in the restaurant. Cool, okay? You got to wear a mask to put on to go to the restaurant, order your food. And then when you're at your table, you could take your mask off, obviously, because you can't eat with one on. But there's no nothing about, you know, when you pay for it. And they don't want people to use cash, which is fine, because I don't like to use cash, because it's a pain. Uh, I use cashless cash. You know, I pay with a debit card, everything. Um, I got credit cards. I just don't use them. Um, and, but they want everybody to pay through this transaction where you're using a common keypad where everybody is touching it. I'm like, okay, but nothing about that. I mean, that's, that's how you get germs. Um, we go to the theme parks in Florida. We used to a lot 
And half of the time that you go to them, this is, you know, last year and before, I'd say half of the time you go to the theme, why did I put the light over here? I'm an idiot. Okay. Just don't pay attention. Don't, don't learn how to paint in this video from me. <laughs> Let's put some white over here so it's easier to access. But in the past, you go to a theme park, and half the time you go there, you come back with some kind of a cold. Nothing life-threatening, but, you know, because you're exposed to germs from all over the world. You know, Orlando gets a lot of visitors from, uh, from many places, but in particular, large groups from... We usually go in the winter time, so it's their summer. Large school groups will come in, like it'll be like all girls or something like that. I'm sure it's some kind of sports team or whatever, and they go take a trip to Orlando. And invariably, you end up getting a common cold or something like that from other parts of the world because your immune system is not used to dealing with that kind of stuff. No big deal, but this year I've been the healthy. I have, you know, we haven't been to those type of places. And I'm wondering if a lot of this isn't made, hasn't really, um, all right, let me get my thoughts together before I say it. Um, not because I'm saying something controversial, just I'm trying to think of what it is. Um, my wife has noticed a lot of people um, before this that go to the bathroom and don't wash their hands. Like, why would you go to a public bathroom and not wash your stinking hands, especially using the stall, you know, because, you know, girls' bathrooms are all uh, stalls. And she's noticed several people go into the, uh, into the stall and not wash their hands. And because of all of these precautions that people are taking, I think people are a little bit more cognizant of that. And then maybe some of these non-hand washers are washing their hands now. I don't know. It's just, um, I've been the healthiest I've ever been this year, you know, from common cold and stuff. I haven't gotten one. Um, and I don't know, maybe things were just really lax to begin with, but I'm not sure how I got on this subject, but anyhow, um, yeah, I forget this, this COVID thing's going on until I end up going to a store and like, I want to get paint. And they're cleaned out of paint, which, by the way, I went to a craft store yesterday and I did was able to buy more of the brown paint there, the cheap craft paint that I use for the base color, I like my woods and stuff. So I got that. I picked up two bottles of that. Um, but, you know, supplying things in normal areas in normal quantities has kind of been an issue. It's a little bit better now than it used to be, but I don't like going to stores and things are half stocked. It's weird. So, but I forget this stuff's going on. You know, most of the time during the week, what do I do? I wake up, I go to work, I come home, and that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm, I don't go anywhere after work. I'm, um, I don't interact with the public and stuff, so. Um, I bought my laptop. I hadn't had a laptop for eight years and I bought my laptop in March just before everything start, went to shit and started closing down. So I did time that perfectly. Um, I don't wanna, I don't wanna spend that kind of money and buy something sight unseen. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know when this, I don't know when this is gonna end. I have a feeling it's gonna be a lot longer than anybody thinks it is if it's, I mean, I don't know what caused this upspike over there in Europe, but, you know. It's, um, luckily it hasn't really affected anything here. I just know the last couple of years have really made me very skeptical of anything I hear. Because Everybody's got an agenda now. Whether I agree with it or not, I don't I don't want agendas, man. Just tell me what's going on. I'm a big boy. I can do my own taxes. I can figure it out. <laughs> but
if those people that are running around, and you guys probably know somebody, there's some folks out there that are really legitimately scared. You guys are gonna be scared for a while, man. You you got needs you need you need, you need to be medicated because I can see this kind of stuff going on for five years plus. So. I'm just kind of poking along here. I wanted things to slow down a little bit at work. We were super busy. Nope, haven't missed a day. As a matter of fact, this year, I don't know how the hell I'm gonna use the rest of my vacation days. I'm probably gonna end up having to leave some on the table, which is all right. I mean, I've, I've had things come up where I've had to take extra days than normal. Not a huge amount, but you know, over the years. So it doesn't bother me. I'm not going to just take a day off to sit at home. Uh, I would, but the problem is, is I got to leave everything done and then fix it when I get back. And it just isn't worth it. I'd rather just stay at work. So. Besides, it's not like I'm going to sit at home and, you know, paint all day. You guys will get a, a 12 hour video of me painting. No, I ended up getting sidetracked into other stuff. So, um, I don't know how many shades I'm doing on this horse, but man, he's really turning out nice. And I, I'd show you a picture, but it just won't even do it justice. It won't be until I take a picture. Somehow the video, just the video quality is just crap, you know. Let's see if we can get... It makes a big difference when I can put it on something and I'm not jittering it around. Let's see if we can do that. Let's see here. It's weird because you see how it's shiny? It's always shiny. These are not shiny paints, but it's always shiny until you give them the final coat. And the shine really keeps you from seeing all the brush strokes. But anyways, this guy's gonna turn out well. I got a couple messages here. Let's see what we got. Uh, it always looks better in the photo. I don't know. You know, I'm limited at 720, which, by the way, um, I'm at max on 5G. So, for those of you guys who don't know, I, my internet signal at home is horrible. As a matter of fact, it disconnected for about three hours. I had no internet at home, but I don't film. I'm, this is not through home internet. Um, this is um, on mobile, which I have unlimited, and I have... I mean, the signal can't get any better. I could, I, I could shove an antenna up my ass and it wouldn't be any better. I'm, uh, I, was, I was at max 4G forever and the neighborhood next door had 5G and now I'm max 5G, they've expanded that. So I don't think that it's any better. People say, oh, well, 5G is a lot faster. I haven't noticed any difference at all. I just think it has, you have access to, to more bandwidth, you know. Uh, it may be more reliable. I'm not sure. I'm not a technology guy. I, I paint things. I paint things that don't move. That's what I do. So, um, any teasers on tomorrow night's DBA game thing? <sighs> you know, I'm not opposed to doing teasers, except uh, I'm opposed to. Um, things not going according to plan and have to explain myself. So everybody has a pet peeve. Mine is explaining myself to people. Um, I have a middle management position. I have to explain things all the freaking time to knuckleheads. Um, what's a knucklehead? Somebody that makes a mistake and keeps making the same mistake. You know, um, you learn from your mistakes. We're all going to make freaking mistakes, but let's not do the same damn thing. Well, that's a knucklehead. So, uh, I check loads. I check truck loads a lot. Simple stuff, right? That people should be able to get right because it's the same thing over and over again. And they still miss things. They're, they're some dumb people. Um, this guy there. I'm going to make sure I'm the dumbest guy there. The guy that can walk around blowing spits bubble, bubbles and be totally happy. That's what I want to be. Not the guy that's worried about shit going wrong. I want to be the mindless fuck. <laughs> it might just be really uh, liberating. 
the theme. Okay, so back to the theme. Um, it depends on how many people show up, which reminds me, I've got to let the guys know that they're... We have a thing where we don't know how many people are going to show up. I mean, I'm going to be there. Mitch is going to... Well, I'm going to be there unless something catastrophic happens. Okay, that's always the case. So, you know, somebody I know goes to the hospital, I won't be there. So, I don't... I will be there. Um, Mitch will be there, obviously, or we won't have it there. Um, Joe's off week. Uh, so, he won't be there. And... Scott will be there. So it'll definitely be us three. Plus uh, the wild card of Luke. So. Um, based on what it is, what Scott and, and what we, we've been trying to do is obviously mix up what we're doing. And also kind of allowing the person that did the best the previous week to pick what the theme is. Now, obviously, uh, let's say if it was... Uh, if it was a week that um, that Joe won, Joe travels from out of town, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to let him pick what the theme is if we know for a fact that it's a week that he's not going to make it. Okay. Um, but he didn't do the best last week. Um, Mitch and... Um, Mitch Scott... Mitch Scott and I all went two and one. So I, I pick things all the time. Um, and uh, I just let Scott, hey, Scott, what do you want to do? And he kind of picked the theme. Because, you know, if it sucks, it's his fault. Nah, I'm kidding. It's not going to suck. But um, based on what he said he wants it to be, um, I should be able to do, um, might, might see some Irish there. Which you know is always fun for me. So, um, the um, you guys really want to know? You want me to spoil the fun? And then the other problem is, is if you do the theme and something happens and you don't, you change it, then all of a sudden, well, why aren't you doing this anymore? How come? How come you're doing the Crusades when you said you were doing Enemies of China? You know. Um, so we'll see. I'll tell you what, though. We haven't played on a 30-inch board in a long time. Not that we're going to have a 30-inch board theme. Um, that'd be collision course. We're due to do another collision course here in some time. Um, we'll probably do it on a week that uh, Joe can join us. But And then Marty's supposed to be come back up on um, the following week, and it's his birthday. So... Normally, we don't plan that many weeks in advance. Uh, I don't want to plan, and the perfect example is, especially this year. Remember earlier this year? It was the first time we do a video of what's coming up this year in DBA games and the freaking pandemic hits. It's like, that's a dick move. You know, the one time we decided to get ahead of the ball and let people know what they can look forward to and the freaking pandemic hits. You mother, you know. So uh, we won't be doing that again. We're not going to be laying out the whole year. Because then you just end up with mud on your face, and it's it's something you can't even control. So, um, and how many layers am I going to do on this horse? I don't know. He's not done yet. I'm enjoying the shit out of this. that and you know not everybody's listening right now so if i tell you what the theme is a little later on i'm like well that theme that i talked about why not soon enough it'll um it's nothing you know out of the ordinary but scott picked it so if it sucks it's on him <laughs> that's some disclaimer You know, last week was a dry spell, right? So um, I I can't have been putting them away. I le left them in my carrying trays. So I've got probably the last 
seven, eight, nine armies that I've gone over there to play with are still in my carrying trays, not in my display case. So um, I knew the army I wanted to use my was my carriage, you know, because they're dry and they only have four or five games in them. And um, so I was getting everything together, you know, camera, camera, mount, charger, uh, all the stuff that I need to bring with me. And um, and I forgot to switch out the, the box that I was carrying in, so I didn't have them with me. So at that point, like, okay, well, do I pack everything? Do I pack back up and go back home to grab them? Like, no, I'll just end up playing the Raj puts that I happen to have with me, which also happened to be dry. So, because that's the thing is on Monday, I'm so freaking rushed. I'm so rushed for time. I got to work. I got to do this. I got to hurry back. I got to... I got to film, uh, I got to go to bed late, like super late, um, got to edit the video. There's just a lot of stuff doing. I mean, I, I wish we would, I wish we would game on the weekends, but we don't. So, uh, we game on Mitch's weekend. So we game on his Saturday, which is his Monday. So, um, he sits around all day, doesn't have to do anything. And, uh, you know, I don't know. So. I'm looking forward to being the cooler weather here, so I can wear some, uh, not be sweating all the time. Okay, so this guy's about done. I'm going to go pour myself some more coffee, and I'll be right back in a jiffy, because, you know, we're almost out here. So, be right back. Okay. Oh, good. Nobody left. Oh, we have the same amount of people. Maybe just new people. Oh, somebody left. You guys just try to make me look bad. <laughs> I can wait for the video later next week. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get the video out on Tuesday, the next day. Um, because I get back so freaking late from the game day. Game day. You know, it's usually midnight. I'm usually not worth a crap after 10. It's midnight before I get home. Then I have to shower. I don't ever go into get into bed without a shower. So, and that's 1 o'clock. And I got to wake up at 5. If I don't wake up at 5, then I don't have an hour to myself to surf before I got to get ready for work. And... Okay, so here we have this dude. So what color is this shirt gonna be? We, seems like we need a blue, a light blue. All right, dude, light blue it is. Let's grab this one. And of course it won't be super bright because you know, this guy's not made of money and tent costs money. So. Yeah, so a couple of you guys are from the UK. So interesting looking at the stats on the videos. Most of the people that watch, well, I, I, I think it's most people that watch that are signed in. I could be wrong, but uh, I don't know exactly how it works. But most people are um, from the UK, 39% or something like that are UK watchers. And then the US and then everybody else. So um, two thirds of all the viewers that I get, or maybe even more, are from the UK and the US. 
So with the UK being a, a higher amount. So I know that if I want to fend something, uh, it ain't the maximum amount of people. I just need to do some, say something offensive to the people in the UK. No, I don't have anything. I don't have anything bad to say about you guys. So, I had a friend of mine who has a, a he has a, he, he just started doing live videos and stuff like that. And he was talking about his stats. He posted a video. He was like, Hey, almost half of my viewers are female. And I'm like, I don't think I have a single viewer that's female. Mine are all, uh, Old English white guys that are 10 years older than me. That's my uh, demographic. <laughs> That's my demographic. Uh, English white folks, UK white folks, I should say that, because, you know, UK, um, Scottish, Welsh, we don't want to discriminate between all the, uh, all those different areas, but, uh, and about 10 years older than I am. So you guys are pushing 60 for the most part. And it makes sense because I started gaming with people that were about 10 years older than I was. That's uh, kind of the demographic, at least for historical stuff. This other guy does, uh, he does all kinds of stuff. He does board games and fantasy and now nah, I'm sticking to historical stuff. Anybody can do fantasy. Anybody can do fantasy. I never, it never appealed to me. I'd rather learn about real things than Games Workshop fluff. Ah, that's the belt, and this is the end of the shirt. Sometimes it's hard to figure some of this stuff out, where things end and begin. We choose a book number and date range for our games rather than a theme. The host chooses. Yeah, we used to do that as well, but I think that the theme works better for us because we want to show some armies that you don't normally see on there. Trying to avoid, you know, armies that are always the same darn makeup. You know, um, don't want to do a book two when you get the, you know, if you do a book, if, okay, if you do a book one, what are you going to get in book one? People are going to play New Kingdom Egyptian. You might get some people to play Assyrians. Um, who else is in book one? Um, early Greek stuff. Trojans. That's pretty much it. That's the only that's the only armies you're gonna see. Nobody's gonna come in and say, Oh, I've got the I'm gonna do the early Sumerians. We don't know we don't have anybody who has those armies. And um they're really deficient in some areas, some some of those armies. Maybe not that one, but um like if you do a book book two, you know, um, people are going to show up with it's going to be like a Roman civil war of different things. So um, nobody wants to do that. Like it, in, a, in a tournament setting, if if I'm running a tournament, you know, I match things up with um, with uh, dates. I make people put what's the date of your army, and obviously it needs to fall within the range of the parameters that that army is allowed to, to be in 
and uh, I avoid civil wars on the on the initial thing. So if you got two people playing Polybians, Polybian Romans, they will not be fighting each other even if they pick the same date on the first game. Now, if you're doing Swiss and winners play winners and they both won, well, then they have to fight each other in the next round. But I'll try to avoid civil wars if possible because it's just they're boring for both people. But we trend, we tend to mix things up. What I don't like is I don't like the match pair. I don't like the match pair matchup. And for those guys that don't know, the way the match pair works is um, you bring two armies. Every person brings two armies with them. And um, they'll say like, okay, here's my feudal Spanish and my Almoravids. So you show up with both of them and somebody comes and plays you. They get to pick which one of the two armies they're gonna play. Two games like that. And then in other two games, so in, in two of your games, it, it's a four uh, game round. In two of your games, you end up um, playing with your armies. So one player comes in, you play your matchup, and then a different player comes and does a matchup. Same thing, they get a choice of which one they get to use. Then your second two games, you do the same thing with two different players. So it's very restrictive on how many players there can be, and it, you have to have four rounds. And at a convention, it doesn't work very well because um, uh, it doesn't work very well because you um, need to um, you you need to have a certain amount of time, or the games end up being very rushed. So uh, I would rather people finish their game than um, than say then call a game on time, unless it's a situation where both people were specifically trying to be avoiding, and that's actually happened once in the last ten years. Um, but for the most part, I want people to finish their games. That's, that's what DBA is, means to me is finishing your games. Every game matters, every game counts. So let people finish their games. There's going to be some people that are done in 20 minutes and there's somebody, people that are going to be done in an hour and 15 minutes. As long as everybody has time to get their game in, then that's really what matters. So, um, and as a painter, I hate the match pair because, um, I, I want to play with the army I just finished. And in a match pair, and oh, and nobody gets, I don't mind people playing with my army, but nobody gets to play my new army first. So if I finish my Irish, the first game they come out, somebody else doesn't get to play them. That's a no-no. That's like, what planet are you from? You know, so, um, and there's no guarantee, you know, painting a new army for that, that you're gonna get to play one of the two armies in particular, so. I'm not a big fan of the match pair. I figure there's other ways to get a balanced game by doing theme events and stuff like that. So, and to be honest with you, some of the more fun games are the ones that aren't balanced. Now they, they favor somebody and it's really exciting when the non-favored person wins. So, um, I, I get that match pairs are fun from the standpoint of balance and historical things, but I think that there's other ways of doing it other than um, an exact match pairs theme. Um, but certainly that's a way to do it. I mean, uh, and that can happen sometimes. You got a theme like uh, uh, armies and enemies of Rome, everybody could show up with a Roman army and then you have no enemies. So, mm. all right, let's add a little bit more coloration to this. So I have no idea what this, this guy, who this guy could possibly be. I can't uh, get in too deep into an army or, you know, I won't get anything painted. I'm trying to see if, if I have painting time to do, I paint. Because I can't look up, I can look up flags or anything else at other times, but I can only paint while I'm here at home and, uh, and everybody's kind of a
you know, I've thought of setting up and doing a game, you know, by myself and film it, but I'm better served doing this because this is what I need to get done. I can, I can play a game anywhere. And we're trying to film every single one that we do. Now with the new phone, it can handle the, it can handle the long videos and not jam up. So. Is there any white left? No. Nope. It's, it's not alive. Oh, that's right. We got the white one over here in this stupid place where I put it over here. Some moron put it all the way over there. And then we'll do the flesh next time. Next up is the flesh. And then we'll do leggings, figure out what color leggings he's gonna have. White hood, we know he's gonna have some kind of a variation of a light colored hood. White off white hood. Hmm. Hmm. Decided to do that kind of theme to tie them all together. The one description in the one book says that he was, uh, the figure had a white hood. So that's kind of the thing that I picked to kind of tie them all together into a unit or into, into the army. You just have to make, uh, sometimes you got to make judgment calls like that. And, uh, cause the information just isn't available. So. It's not like you're picking purple or something like that. You're not picking something outlandish that just wouldn't have been. So put, make an educated guess and put your own spin on it. Should I go up a little bit more? I think I will. Just a tiny little bit. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna do this guy's face. You got a little spot here that popped. There we go. A little spot of primer that popped open. <sighs> Let's see what we got here. Nothing, okay, you guys are just on cruise control, that'll work. <clears throat> as long as I can stay awake, we'll uh, we'll go on this Joe ride. All right, let's see. Uh, where are my usual suspects? Here we are. Red leather. Bad red leather for that. 
And good old sunny skin tone. I think I figured, finally figured out how to say that damn name without tripping all over it. Scunny skin tone. Sunny skin tone. Put that away, put the blue away. so it's handy. Yeah, we still got black. All right. I just realized I've been used, I've been doing the big non-detail brush for all this other stuff. Oh, well. Give it a new lease on life. We're not going to do that for flesh, though. my glasses so I can see. <laughs> what? Well, I'm really not paying attention. I haven't woken up yet, I guess. These dumb bastards have eyes, son of a bitch. Oh, damn you, sculptor. All right. Sometimes they have eyes that are visible, sometimes they don't have eyes. All right, this isn't working. Let's get in there. Try and not put more black down there because it's just kind of a waste. There we go. Now we just need a small vertical line. 
There we go. There we go. All right, now we go back to where we were on this, which is adding more of this to it. Yeah, sometimes they get eyes, sometimes they don't. It just depends what the sculpt decided to put them in there. It's a big enough area that I've got to do something with it. I can't just leave it. I can't just leave it there, so. Okay. That guy's got a little goatee beard. Every single one of them has something like that. This guy has kind of a misshapen head, like a casting line through the middle of it. Nothing really I can do about that. We'll make it work. It's all good. Hmm. Pretty sure that's slightly skin tone in there. You guys are quiet this morning. <clears throat> well, you're always quiet, but you know, interaction wise. Yep. Guess it'd be the time to ask questions because there's no line. Not that I have all the answers. Okay, and let's add a little bit of white to this. Let's 
not get crazy because this is white's very powerful just like black is very powerful you put just a little bit goes a long way yeah five folks welcome welcome come on in For those of you just joining us, we're painting a Hungarian horse archer. This is the fourth figure and the last figure in this uh, in this set because we got a couple of hussars to do, but they they're wearing something totally different. They're wearing a very Eastern type of uh, robe. We'll have to we'll have to do some. We'll have to do some hunting of some pictures to get an idea of what some of those guys may look like. Just to kind of form our own opinion of how I'm gonna paint them. So. Okay. Let's compare the face tone. Eh, it's not right. Maybe a little bit more white. That's in only select few places and then we should be good to go and we're going to do the bow next. Okay, bow time. Let's rinse this. Got some paint stuck on it. Let's see if we can't take care of that right now. It's just always one bristle or so that likes to keep the paint. And then another paint sticks to that. And this helps quite a bit, thinning the, uh, keeping it moist so it doesn't dry on there. So that's kind of made a difference. There we go. We'll let that sit there for a little bit. Uh-oh. There's somebody at. I see some commentary. Harvey Gunt. Harvey Gunt. Good afternoon, Tony. Since you mentioned it, I shall put down my brush and interact. I'm looking forward to watching your Monday night games. I am too. <laughs> I enjoy playing. I enjoy painting. I, I enjoy talking about the figures the most, honestly. I guess I'm more of a painter than I am a gamer. Um, I, uh, you know, I've done so much gaming that one more game doesn't make that much of a difference. Let's use, let's see, what do you use for the bow? You got some of these brushes like this one. Look at this damn thing. I don't know if you can see it that well. Here. With a tip bent like this, this thing has no hope. This like, this will end up getting used for like the terrain and stuff like that to get in there. I mean, I keep it over here. I'm not going to use that anytime soon, but they don't, uh, I always find other uses for these brushes. And, uh, even when they stop performing as well as I would like them to, you know, you, you don't need to waste a good brush on, um, on backbreaking work, so to speak for them. All right, let's, uh, let's get Mr. Buff out and, uh, and get, uh, this on there. So. Yeah, we'll try to get the um, we'll try to get the games out on Tuesday. It it is a marathon to try to do that. Um, although what I've started, what what sped up the process is I'm not watching everything. Um, something happened in the filming of the videos, and I, I don't know what happened. I haven't changed anything, but it's all coming almost always as one big file, which is big because I don't have to splice things together, which takes no time, but it's just one less thing to do. And uh, I don't have to splice the videos together 
and um, and I'm I'm not watching the whole video anymore. I'm I'm editing the beginning where I'm pony, posting pictures of the folks uh, and their armies. Uh, I'm picking some music from the free music uh, thing. I mean, I'm not spending two hours looking for an Asian theme music if it's an Asian theme game because uh, that could that could eat up two three hours of me trying to. Um, it's fun, but it just it's going to delay doing the getting the video out. And um, let's just get some this black is just difficult now. Let's. Um, what else am I doing a little differently? I'm not watching a whole video because um, you know a four and a half hour video means I have to watch it for four and a half hours. It's a four and a half hour delay, which those four and a half hours means it's not going to go out the next day. So I'd like to put them out the next day, the, the following day after we film it. And um, shooting it in one big, one big stream is, is a lot easier than doing one battle at a time. So just trying to do methods to keep myself from burning out and saying, you know, it's, this is too much work. I don't want to do these videos again because I don't want it to come to that. So, because I guess some people are watching them. <laughs> uh, and some people are watching them and we're trying to get most of the stuff right. It becomes really difficult sometimes, but I'm not going to let it eat at me. You know, if we get something wrong, it happens, you know. Uh, you guys make your own videos and do a better job than we do. Hey, we just showed you how not to do it. Go ahead and have at it. It's um, it's difficult. It's really, really difficult. So, strange poses, guys. Like almost resting his chin on the top of the bow. Not something I'd want to do if I'm riding on a galloping horse. Doesn't sound like. Doesn't sound like fun to me. Need to play a period to motivate myself to paint. My group managed to play. A three, three aside, Napoleonic game. Three of us ordered more figures the following week, and a fourth guy got his lead mountain out. There you go. That's what it's all about. You're in the UK, I believe. So, how's this whole lockdown thing going to affect you guys? Is it uh, you guys okay to assemble in smaller groups? Does it please the crown for you guys to assemble in small groups? Seems like the hotbed of DBA conventions, well, not really a hotbed considering none of them really going on, is uh, Australia. They seem to have found a, a way that has um, they've been successful having, you know, 10, 12 people at a, at a gathering just to play DBA. It's not a full-blown show or anything, but that's at least good. I'm going to take a little potty break. I'll be back in uh, just a few minutes, hopefully.
Okay. Let's see what I missed. You guys start a revolt while I was gone. We've managed to limit our monthly meeting to six. So one guy has to drop out. Looks like we will have to cancel our next meeting, perhaps the December one too. Yeah. Yep. So you have a seven player group. That's a good number. That's a good number. You only game once a month? That sucks. Oh man. You only face to face game once a month. What I meant. I guess that's better than only painting once a month. I'd rather. I assume you're painting while we're doing this. You're not just uh Sitting around smoking a pipe, listening to me ramble. <laughs> hey, you do whatever you want. That's fine. You don't even have to wear any pants if that's what you want to do. Sorry, trousers. Okay, and we're gonna do a little bit of white to to pop this uh, the boat. White keeps moving on me. I guess if you game with your immediate family, right? You could, you could, there's no limits on it. I'm not really affected by all that. All right, we're gonna do a, uh, we're gonna do this hood. We're gonna need some white. We're gonna need more white than that. Let's go ahead and put that down now before we go any further. And we're not gonna mix this one in with white, with, uh, with, with black. We're gonna use brown. We probably still have some of the brown left over here. We painted the horse, so let's go ahead and try to make uh, use of that. Well, I thought I did, and it dried out on me. It's good work. I feel like grabbing some more and mixing it out. So uh, let's go over here. We're going to have to switch this thing out when we're done with the Hussar figures as well. So no big deal. I was hoping to pick up more of these papers at Historicon, but since there wasn't a Historicon, that didn't happen. I don't want to order this stuff, so... I should have enough. I should have enough of these to go maybe another couple of years. So, came with fifty. So, I'm not sure exactly how many I've used up, but I don't think it's more than twenty. We're able to hire a village hall for Saturday 9 a.m. to 4. So these games are pretty large. The Holy Night game used close to 3,028 millimeter figures on an 18 by 6. Oh, geez. That takes up a lot of space. That takes up a lot of space. A village hall. Same group all in the same city, or you people travel from other neighboring towns to play? Twenty-eight millimeter figures. Man, that just takes up way too much space. That takes way way too much time to paint. 
That's what would keep me from doing something like Saga or something like that. It's just, well, that and the fact that they redid the rules again. That just, I don't have time for that nonsense to throw money at a problem. I don't like the Codex business model. I get why they do it, but I, I don't, I still don't like it. So, uh, but Peyton 28s, that's just way too much time for me. Never got into Napoleonics. Had a group when I was younger that was playing them, and they just didn't look—they just didn't look like they were having much fun. We're all from the same town. Our joint collection of Napoleonic figures has been built up over the last twenty years. Yeah, never got into it. And the guys who were playing, they just didn't seem like they were having a whole lot of fun. Um, now, Mitch Mitch has played quite a bit of Napoleonics. He has a ton of Napoleonic figures, so much that, um, you know, I'd never, I'd never paint any. But, um, and he had his friend with, uh, he's got a friend of his that's supposedly going to retire in, kind of in our area in the next couple of years. And he's been working on DBN armies. And he has a lot of them. And um, but he's gonna have to be the point man on that. I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not gonna be the point man. I don't mind playing other rules, but I'm not gonna be the go-to guy on other rules. I'm I've 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 kind of uh, met my fill in this in this game. I've gotten my fill out of uh, and I don't mean my Phil Barker. I don't mean well maybe I do mean my Phil Barker. Out of um, out of these games, I don't want to uh, sit there and have to come up with answers for other stuff. So I'm just happy just playing, rolling dice. One thing we played some amount is we played this board game called it's kind of like Axis and Allies, sort of called Napoleon in Europe. We played that. Is a game I used to actually have a copy of it and then Mitch had one as well before we even knew each other and uh, it's a beautiful looking game and um, we hadn't played it any of us until like maybe three years ago and then um, started learning how to play it and we probably played seven or eight games of it and uh, pretty decent game but a lot of people are just kind of sitting around waiting when two people are going at it so I was fortunate enough to be in the middle of it when we were playing. I decided to play the Austrians and um, really like the Austrians. So I got a soft spot for the Habsburgs anyway, so that kind of helps. But if I was gonna play, if I was gonna paint uh, uh, Napoleonic figures, it'd be Austrians, they're all white and you know, could do different shades of the white and stuff on there, but I won't be doing any of those. Uh, Mitch has too many figures already. He's got all the Austrians, English, French, Russians that we could possibly need. Prussians. Yeah, it was a fun game.
I watched Waterloo one time. Started watching the Sharp series, which everybody really likes, and I don't know, maybe watched four or five episodes a little while ago, and I just couldn't get into it. Couldn't get into it because um, I um, I don't play, I don't game that period. If I game that period, I'd probably like it, but. Um, Just too many things to watch. Something doesn't like freaking awesome. It doesn't um, doesn't captivate me. Like I said, I can't watch something and and while I'm painting. So I just sit there, have to watch it, watch it. You're still painting more. Okay, well, that's good. The appeal for me would be to learn about the uniforms and which ones have the this color piping and that kind of stuff. But I never really got into it because, like I said, the group that was playing, it didn't look like they were having fun. And and the, the Army, the uniforms are too similar. I mean, I know they're all different, but I mean, as far as style and stuff, they're, they're just too... They're just some parts of history. I just don't really, not really, I don't find the, the warfare particularly interesting. Um, American Civil War comes to mind. I don't like the uniforms. I don't like the form of warfare. I, I, you know, I don't like to play American conflicts because you know I'm already American. It's boring. You know, um, yeah, I really don't like American Civil War. Never have. You know, I'm sure there's some conflicts you don't find interesting. You know, they'll just be like, why would you play that? I don't want to paint the figures. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to paint uh, Crimean War. Boring, you know. No, there's people that love that kind of stuff. I'd enjoy the sword and the flame time period a little bit more if it wasn't so Anglo-centric. Nothing against that, but I like the different nations at play. So, you know, if there was more, I mean, I guess you could make imaginary conflicts and stuff like that. But, you know, you got stuff with, you know, Russians and English and, and, and would it be Prussians? No, it'd be German by that time period. French all interacting along with the natives. That'd be pretty cool. Um, a lot of people that were playing Sword and Flame, but. It might be cool to do in 15s. Just not a lot of huge variety of people that make figures for that, but I was toying with the idea. We were doing a brainstorming session after one of the games of Sword in the Flame. And I said, he was thinking about doing something in Afghanistan. I said, well, that would be freaking great because you could do, you know, in Afghanistan, you could have the local local guys plus all the different tribes they could have. You could have English, you could have mercenaries, I mean, uh, missionaries. You could have uh, Russians, you know, you could have all these little subplot type things going on. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool. I just don't know the rules well enough. Otherwise, you could probably, I don't want to paint them in 28s. They played in 28s, but it's too expensive, take up too much space. But, you know, shit, you could do something like that and just base them on 15s and do them individually. You know, that'd be, that'd be all right. We stop talking about it. I want to end up start starting to serve figures for that period. <laughs> Twenty eights just take too long to paint for me. I know they're more expensive. That's not the turnoff. The turnoff is is they just take too long to paint. Take way too long for me to paint to to this level. I'm not going to paint them crappily. You know, I'm not just going to throw them and, and give them a wash. I'm going to give them the kind of attention they deserve. Um, and um, that's just going to take too much of my time. So, and I don't want to play games anymore where I have to supply all the figures. Because um, it takes me all the time to, play, to, to paint them. And then I've got to mine them. I've got to make sure people aren't bending muskets, etc. You know, so...
I was going to get back into doing naval. That's what we started doing. Naval combat is probably what I would do. I would do Victorian area era stuff, and then do you know a whole bunch of what ifs. Not big fleet actions, but you know, kind of what if type scenarios like that. Okay, this guy's going to be a little bit browner type hood, and that's okay. Let's bring a little bit of the pure white and highlight just a select few areas, but leave the other one still with some of that brownish tinge on there. I don't know if you guys have ever played Sword and a Flame, but the author that he would come to our cons and he'd put on games or whatever. Larry Brom. The weird thing about those set of rules is you've got the, um, you have to roll to see how far your units can move, which is kind of an interesting mechanism because you have no control over how far they can move, but, but, but you know, before it's the next guy's turn. So you may want to move a certain distance, but you roll a bunch of ones and you can't make that distance up. But All right, legging time. red we got a gray I don't want to do brown uh, guess I could do another gray a brownish type gray like say um, this color here look it's kanaki gray <laughs> That's a little too drab. There's plenty of them that's going to be drab. Let's um, let's do uh, let's just do a light gray color. That should be all right. Oh, here we go. My group mixes up periods each month. We'll play a 15 millimeter ACW game back in September. Not a go-to period for me, but played using figures provided by other guys. Our November game was to be World War II using bolt action. It looks like it must be deferred. Okay, you're currently sorting out 1880s to 1906, 1 3000 scale ships for use with Tsushima rules by a and Games Design. Okay, a and Games, yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah, 1880s. Yeah, 1880s. That's a good period. Yeah, I want to do the first thing I want. If I got back into that, I sold all my, all my, all my ships. I had probably 500 ships. Nothing that early. It was all mostly World War II. Um, if I got back in. That's what I would do. I would start in that area. I build those Italian ones. So what is it? Uh, Italia and Lepanto that could carry like the 10,000 10, troops on board but have like no armor. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I'd probably do the minor navies. I would do, you know, uh, a, a British ship here and there, but not, you know, I don't need to collect, you know, 20 English ships because they're all over the place. So it'd be more like cruiser action kind of stuff, you know. Um, the problem with those naval games is you just don't have any meaningful decisions to make from turn to turn sometimes. That's what makes DBA great is there's almost always meaningful decisions that you get to make as a player. Um, 
some of those naval games, unless there's some weird visibility conditions, it's usually, okay, turn broadside and find your optimal range to engage the enemy and just kind of, and just kind of pepper them. Um, and if you're not a person who doesn't have a love of the ships themselves, it's kind of a boring game. So I grew up playing Sea Creek 4. We had to range estimate ranges and all that. And I played some of Sea Creek 5, but it's just gotten, it's just gotten too, um, too difficult. I need to get Joe to run a game because Joe knows how to run Sea Creek 5 really well. And, um, that was, that was uh, just do a small scenario or whatever, but I'm definitely a rivet counter. I don't want to, I couldn't handle a DBA type game in, uh, if we're doing naval. I want all those details. Looking to fight the naval battles of the conflict between the Grand Duchy of Moldau and Grand Torrington. Imaginations based on Austria-Hungary and Great Britain. Yeah, I like the idea of imaginations. I don't know if I could get along with it with ships, but um, I guess you could make your own ships also. That'd be all right. That'd be okay. Yeah, several years, maybe almost 10 years ago. Thank you. About 10 years ago, I was going to start working on my African. Damn battleships again, but I feel Barker. I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could do it. It's just too, I can't handle a game. Is every battleship the same? If it is, I, there's no way I'd play it. There's absolutely no way I'd play it. I'm just too much of a naval nut. You wouldn't know by playing this, but that's what I, you know, that's what I grew up doing is um, getting into naval stuff. I don't know. I'm just, I like Barker's games. I just, his wording is just, drives me bananas. No, not his wording. Where, you know, the fact that he doesn't repeat anything a second time and you got to hunt for rules and they're in places you wouldn't put them that stuff i mean he's a genius don't get me wrong i mean he's he does great stuff but man he just drives me nuts man i've burned i've, I've been burned out on on uh maybe if i was unemployed you know i could just <laughs> do that kind of thing damn battleships again if all the battleships are the same then no no I mean, I would love to play DBMM, but uh, what is it, the small rules thing? I want to try um, Mortem at Glory Impacto. And I know somebody in Florida who's, I think, is pretty familiar with them, but I'm just not going to learn them. I'm like, I'm, I'm burned out on learning rules. I've just, it's, I've just done it too much with DBA. It's just burned me out on it. Um, I almost rather just freaking make my own damn game that's easy to explain to people that has easy charts that make sense than uh, to learn something new. But I just, I don't have the time for that. That's going to cut it in my painting thing. So that's going to cut it in. So I was saying about 10 years ago, I was going to do a imaginations type thing on, um, in Africa, set in the 1960s ish, but all imagination stuff. So that's, uh, that would have done a really good narrative similar to that. Uh, what's that fake thing that the, the guy's running for uh, AK 47 Republic Bangalesia. You guys aren't familiar with that. That's that guy's got a whole lot of fake fluff going on. It's very interesting, but I just don't have the energy to do everything. Um, there, I have to do all the troops, which they paint up a lot quicker. 
um, but um, terrain and you know I, I don't I don't want to play those games and the terrain not be like perfect you know I want like the uh, magazine quality uh, terrain type things and I just don't have the I don't have the time or energy to do all that so we're, we're stuck with this little medieval type thing game okay. and this works And you start drifting off with games that don't have a uh, a base of people that already play them. And the next thing you know, it's... Uh, well, that happened with World War II. I was on the miniatures page a lot for World War II stuff before DBA. And people would just... People got n hostile things to say about you. Like, why are you playing that scale? Or why are you playing those set of rules? They're stupid. Or how about you? If you don't like something, you just go somewhere else. You know? I don't go to... I don't go and frequent things I don't like and complain about them. You know, yeah, if I don't like Warhammer 40K, I don't go to the Warhammer 40K site and complain about how the rules suck. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me, you know. Some people are looking for therapy and some people are looking to lash out, so. I'm a therapy person, so I don't need to create any conflict. I do understand you've rivet counting, but you've identified the problem of minimal decision making. Damn battleships resolves that. How does it do that? Because of pips? It's got to be because of pips. I think pips is brilliant. I, allowing you to not do everything you want at one time. Yeah, I think Austrians and, and Italians are a good matchup. Or, you know, part of the French as well. You know, the stuff that people don't normally do, you know. So. Or like, you know, the several Chinese ships versus a, a an, an Austrian and a German ship or something like that. Uh, <clears throat> if the Germans come in and help the, uh, the, uh, the Spanish and the Philippines against the Americans... Uh, you know, lots of almost if type stuff, not just, you know, not one of these games where you see like, well, we're going to have a game and we're going to have all the access players or we're going to have a Yamato and a Latorio and a, and a Bismarck. And a, and just, no, no, that, that stuff's, you know, you could do it if you want, but you're not going to get me to play a game like that. You know, what if stuff that almost happened kind of thing, you know. That's the stuff that appeals to me. That's what most of our uh, gaming stuff would be. You know, we did a lot of World War II Mediterranean stuff. That's my favorite theater. Because you've got, air, both sides can have aircraft if they want to. They can both have fleet sized units if they want to. Um, I like the Mediterranean. Both people running convoys, both sides running convoys. You know, it's really the, it's got everything there, you know. Okay. Yes, because of pips. Turning or turning back in a line, all cops pips. Speeding up a group is a pip, etc. Well, that's interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. Hmm. And those early things are close enough that you can ram people. And of course, that adds another dimension to things. Ramming folks. You don't want to do it, but it's fun when it happens. Okay, we need to find out what color hair this guy is going to do. 
I don't know, can Hungarians be blonde? I guess they could be. One out of four isn't bad. We're going to give this guy lighter hair anyways. Let's come over here. Doesn't have to be a Hungarian guy. He could be just a mercenary. Hey, bomb folks got to work too. Dark. Don't need to go that dark. Bomb people got money issues too. Find the rules on Phil Barker's own page. Okay, well, I'll check it out. You can always just take the core rules and then just, you know, make actual ships. Make them a little different, you know, from each other. If I was going to do that again, I'd probably do 1 6,000. That way the gate scale of the game is, is closer to what it looks like in real life. And you could play on a smaller surface type thing. Squeaky light. Let's get a little bit of yellowish color here. I think this is one of a dry yellow. Dry is, yellows are either dry or too wet. Yeah, it's kind of the wet one. I need to replace that yellow, but I need to go to a store and pick it up. That one's just, just too old. I, probably, I don't know how long the Yeho paints have been on, but that one seems like it was sitting on somebody's shelf for like 10 years. Probably wasn't considering I picked it up maybe 16 years ago. Oh, uh, what's this? Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, no. That's nice. I don't like having notifications up on my phone. Like, what is it? All right, let's lighten him up a little bit. Oh, we need a smaller brush than this. This one's, this one's too industrial strength for this. Oh, look, I'm shedding. All right. I've been at a computer game for a while, and they did a giveaway the other day where they were... The, on Steam, they were had a couple of games that were free to play, and I watched a couple of videos on this one, this one game that looked interesting because, um, uh, just kind of the historical period interact with DBA, or whatever it's called, Crusader Kings, and they just came out I think last month with Crusader Kings three, but the second one's available to play free on the Steam site. So I downloaded it the other day and looked at it. And... Holy shit, that's complicated. I mean, I'm way too complicated. That must be for somebody that just doesn't have a job mm. and wants to be in management. Or I should say, wants to be in micromanagement. 
No, that's just way too complicated. I'm a tactics guy, anyways. I don't. I'm not interested in these deep strategy type things. So, you know, um, I'm not programmed for that. I'm not interested. But yeah, I watched a couple videos how to play that. Way too complicated. There you go. Share rules info and you help people out. Okay, so this guy needs a bow case. All right, what do we got bow case? We got a dark brown. We got a gray with some stuff on it. Yeah, this one. Um, let's do a reddish brown one. Let's do that. Uh, let's grab that mahogany color. Mahogany. I think this is the one. Yep. Whew. Yeah, I got some 16,000 scale ships painted, but they're modern. They're for that shipwreck, which again, I haven't painted it. I've seen some people playing it at a con, but man, it's so hard for me to learn how to play something. I almost have like a learning block when it comes to that. But I did modern, not because I love the modern period, because it suits its well well to this, not necessarily ima imagination stuff, but you know, fake conflicts like the, I got Chinese, Japanese, and uh, and uh, Taiwan islands that the Chinese are building out of nowhere in the South China Sea. Could have them out there as well, and things that relate to that. And they paint up pretty nice. You know, they're very small. Lots of people make them in um, shape ways and they're affordable. So if you do like I did and don't do anything with them after painting them, then you don't feel so bad because they didn't throw a lot of money at them. So let's do some edging on here and we'll leave the center barren. such a just such a big area you need to put some kind of design on these things Put a little Hungarian symbol on that, but with the multiple crosses type thing. Where's the, the white drought again? Jeez. I'm sure you guys have been you stop looking at their videos for a while and um, and um, you gotta play catch up I got several people that are like that I got these people of 
probably the best videos out there I've seen. They're these folks and, um, well, they don't need me promoting their site because they got a million viewers. I forget what it's called, but uh, uh, what's the name of their site? I just got another notification on them, but 3D something racing. Anyways, it's diecast racing. These guys run this diecast racing league. And all it is is, you know, like diecast cars like uh, Hot Wheels or whatever. And they have timers on them and stuff like that. And they run it just like it's a real race with the announcing and everything. And it's hilarious. They've got four or five different cameras on it. And it's really professionally done. These guys are out in California. Extremely entertaining to watch. People will... People will submit their cars. They have to fall within a parameter of different weights and stuff like that. And um, they'll make up a fake name for the driver and stuff like that. And they'll compete, you know, and, and there's nothing to it. You just, you know, they have this release mechanism where they'll compete in heats with against one other car or maybe a pack of six or whatever. And they release them all and they all go down there. And it's, it's, it's announced just like it's a real race. It's hilarious. 3D bot maker. I believe that's what it is. You do a YouTube search for 3D bot maker. That's those guys are really, really talented. And I know from making videos how much effort goes into making those videos. That's not that's not easy. That's that's uh, a lot of work that goes into those. So I have a bunch of those to catch up on. They put out a, a new video every week, and um, I haven't watched it in probably six months, probably. So I got a whole bunch of them to watch. They'll do different races and stuff like that. Good stuff. Good stuff. Talented folks. Okay, that should be just fine. Just something simple. And there's some little detail in there on the bow case. It's such a big area, you got to do something to it. So, okay, I think it's come to the time of doing saddles and horse straps. So, we're just going to do a, just kind of a standard uh, standard saddle color for that. Standard saddle cloth color. Um, that's too close in color to the horse. Something way too different. battleships again. Once I looked at it and it was 
Well, it doesn't mean you have to run it exactly like the way the rules say. It's not like you're going to have a damn Battleships Again tournament. I mean, I guess you could, but... saddle showing up back here towards the back. Oh, I thought there was. Maybe there isn't. I'm gonna go ahead and paint the straps in this color as well. The ones, at least the ones that hold the saddle down. The ones that come across the belly. Belly of the beast.
All right, we'll do the rest of the horse trapping now. No. I'm actually going to do some bread. We're going to do that. That's what we're going to do. So. Flat red's just fine. Be right back. Get some. I think I'm gonna go get some water as well. Be back in a few minutes. Okay. Four people. People like it better when I'm not here. That'll work. what I miss? Nothing. You guys are just silently waiting my arrival. Okay. Let's do some red. something to snack. I was getting extremely hungry. All right. Paint all these straps in this dark red color.
and we're not going to go really bright with this red. That would just be improper. Did, uh, I know I'm damn battleships again, but you also created what that horse foot and guns. And you guys played that. Do you like it? You ever eaten something? The more you eat it, the hungrier you get. They could quiet it all down again. Well, let's see, what should we talk about? Oh, there you go. Play horse, foot, and guns. Person is a slow game. Personally, I like Phil's rules having grown up with WRG. I did not grow up with WRG. I don't have a problem with his rules. I have a problem with the way the wording is of them. The organization of them is. I don't have a problem with the rules themselves. They're just a nightmare for people to find, and they really turn people off and aren't used to. It's just too much effort. It just, it creates too much effort trying to figure things out that shouldn't be creating that kind of effort. Like it should be easy to learn, to be able to play a game, but difficult to master. And it's both. So. That's why I'm gonna work on my Renaissance stuff if that ever comes to fruition. It will not be based on DBA 3.0. It will be its own thing. It'll be DBA-ish as far as scale and stuff like that. Pips, but it gotta be easy to teach people. If if I work on it. And you'll know, because I'll start painting stuff for that period. Yep, 
I know there's one 700 scale waterline things. Mine started with um, the 600 scale Airfix, which were rebranded here in the States as MPC kits. I had several of those. Mine actually started with a book that my dad got. I do a book review on it on my channel. Check on book reviews. There's only two books on there, and one of them is the, the Naval book. And that one really, the art in it really gave me an interest in the, all the ships. And I started reading about that stuff in junior high. And then I found out that you could game it. And I was hooked. So. And, um, yeah, the rest is history, but I haven't done any naval gaming in a while. Mainly because I want the kind of detail that, that provides a very slow game. You know, in the late 80s, early 90s, the game I played the most that was, was naval. That's, that's what we played. I probably played, I don't know, 200 games of it. So I knew it really well. I knew it better than I do DBA, and I've played 20 times more games of it, of DBA. So, but uh, it's not, it wasn't difficult to, to understand the rules, even though they were very detailed, they just took a long time to, to, to get a resolution. You spend a lot of time wait on, on misses. Like if you get a hit, it doesn't really matter how long it takes because it's interesting to see like where the shell hit, what damage it'd do, did it penetrate the armor, that kind of stuff. But when you spend a lot of time trying to figure out whether or not you even hit the ship and then you don't, that's kind of like a bummer. Like nobody cares about that, you know. A miss is a miss. So, um, but we played that a lot. We played one game for 26 hours straight on the floor, and um, we weren't bored. It's not like we didn't get, go through a lot of turns. Went through like 50 something turns. But it was inconclusive at the end of it all. One, neither side could claim victory. It was a pretty big fleet action. It wasn't like we were doing two ships on a side, but. Yeah, I ain't playing on the floor again, ever. I can get on the floor, it's just not worth it. It's too uncomfortable on the tailbone. Not worth it. How big a service you need for damn battleships again? Obviously you can modify the ranges, but Wait a few years and see what state your knees are in after a few hours of kneeling. Yeah, it's not worth it. Shouldn't be that difficult to be 
to have a good time. Folks, I'll be right back.
Okay. A little bit of a sidetrack in there, so we figured we'd do something positive with that as well. And uh, I remembered that I needed to make another woods, or I wanted to make another woods, so we'll probably work on that simultaneously. For those of you who do not know, I'm a notoriously bad multitasker. Notoriously bad. And I don't care that I'm bad at it. I'll admit it. So I wanted to make a smaller woods. So let me go pull out my new Mark III woods so we can compare size-wise and make something a little bit different. screw up something fierce. Okay, let me consult the rules. Let's look at train sizes on the rules. features. Each must fit into a rectangle. Yeah, yeah. Only one feature can have a length of less than three base widths. Only one feature can have a length. Maximum dimension of less than three base widths. Every feature must have a length and a width of at least one base width. But only one can have a length maximum dimension of less than three base widths. Why do you make it so complicated, Barker? <laughs> what, there's not a single pencil here? Jeez. All right. Hit things too long for myself. these guys because there's no point in me making another set of woods that I can't use together with the other one. So one of only one of them can have less than three base widths. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. So this one is plain. It, this is the little guy. So I can't have another little guy. One, two. Okay. So I've got to make one of them that's I can't make another one like this size. I gotta make it a little bit bigger if I want another small one. All right, fair enough. Now, this wasn't the exact same cardboard I used. It was the same style, but thickness-wise, I wanna make sure that they're equivalent and not that this one's thinner, which I think is what the case is with this. It's not. Well, this thing's already warping. This one's a little bit thinner. All right, we'll mess with this another time. Forget it. Forget I mentioned that. I thought I was just gonna make other woods, but I don't want one that's thicker than the other one, but I do need to make some other woods. Uh, another one that's smaller, and also the I wanna make an L-shaped one as well. So these uh, this style was a, has been a hit. I'm gonna put them back in my traveling box. Otherwise, I end up leaving them when I go there tomorrow and get pissed about it. So I'll be using some woods and what I do. Okay. 
that was uh, my sidetrack, but I do need to do that, so. Uh, what is that? DBM ships uses a large footprint per ship. You should be able to condense that. Yeah, we played on the six traditional six by four table, but was a tad cramped. Really? Wow, okay. Most of the time we got balancers, hoping to do DBM ships and provides much food for thought. Catch you another time. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Big footprint per ship, so that means they're probably on stands with a lot of dead space on the stand. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, we could change for that. All right. Clear the table. Find it. Clutter it back up. Yeah, I had to go to the garage to go do something, so I thought, oh, let's get a piece of cardboard and mess with that. Nah. I don't want I don't want one board that's thicker than the other. And one tree. We'll just play with those three tomorrow. No big deal. Push them, Bram. All right, I like that. I like what you're doing there. Yeah. Hopefully, you can post some pictures there on the um, on the. I'm not sure. You you post on uh, the Facebook page. For um, the DBA sites. That's the best thing about Facebook is putting those pictures on there. Can't do that on Fanaticus anymore. Too, too difficult. Got to go to a hosting site and they got to go to a free one and then link it there and Okay, let's add some white to this. A little bit of highlighting and then we're done with this color. And 10 to once are finished. Okay, perfect. Excellent. Okay. That's about done. We need to do the um, the bow case for this dude. I might take a little bit of a break. I am going to do that. I need to get some real food in me instead of just snacking on some pretzel sticks. But maybe we'll be back on today. Maybe we won't be. But um, that's going to wrap this one up. So uh, I'd like to finish this uh, this horse archer today. So that's going to be my push to get that done. But Okay, well, we'll catch you guys next time. And uh, happy painting. Bye-bye.